And everybody wants to find their way back home and yourself is your way back home through your practices and through their, your connection to the energy vibrations. It's a connection that's not only a feeling and a thought, and it's a whole process of existing so that the pieces around you actually melt or seem to operate according to you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Today is going to be one of the most impactful days, impactful modules you've ever even thought about taking the time out for yourself to scale the mountain of enlightenment. This is going to really, really accelerate all of the goals you've got in each of your grade eight. What's so important about today is that it deals with the choice factor in the face of when things look good or when they don't look good and how to keep yourself going so that you're in great shape the whole time using the energy. So I thought the best way to get that started today would be to give you one of my favorite, favorite authors, uh, one of his stories about what we're gonna be talking about today. And of course, there's a lot of words in there since it was written a long time ago in German uh, that was, you won't get the full impact of it until we get through the whole talk. So make sure you listen to everything we go through and plus the breathing exercises and the physical exercises all the way to the end of this module, both sets, past the break. So we're gonna get started now with a wonderful, wonderful poem. Actually, it's, it's more like a story about a very, very wonderful, and this, this is a true story now. This is not something that was made up. And it's very important that it's true because when the truth is the truth is the truth, that means you can use it. It doesn't matter whether it happened in uh, zero BC or whether it happened in 1800, 1900, 20 and up. So get ready. So Franz Kafka, famous writer, wrote wonderful, 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 you know, great plays, great, great theatrical novels. And he wrote one gorgeous little story that not many people know about. But in the people who studied him and wanted to know why was this man so brilliant and why was he so capable? I mean, what gave him, you know, the access to that? I mean, was he like connecting to the Akashic records and I'm a person who got hit by lightning? And can no, he wasn't like that at all. This, what I'm going to read to you now is, uh, or, or recollect to you, is the story of Franz and a little girl. She's about nine years old and he met her mm, in the park one day, just to, you know, he was doing his usual manuscript writing and she was sitting there and she was very, very, very tearful. And so what today's talks about is freedom. You having freedom that you can exist in the world as your, say it now, as your authentic, real, big S self. Yourself, an actual expanding experiential three to four, five dimensional self that's so powerful that you came from two little tiny seeds and then those seeds grow up to where you are now and it still functions and yourself is still working so hard to keep working with you and to tap into the energy that feeds this body and your whole self gives you the blending of you back at home again. And everybody wants to find their way back home and yourself is your way back home through your practices and through their, your connection to the energy vibrations. And it doesn't matter what religion you're in or what your belief system, whether you want to call it the Holy Spirit or the universe, God, Mother Nature, it's a connection that's not only a feeling and a thought, and it's a whole process of existing so that the pieces around you actually melt or seem to operate according to you and your wanting to do great things for other people, for yourself and for the environment altogether so that you're accomplishing at all times, you know, being contributing, winning for yourself, winning for the other person, simultaneously, not later, and for your environment, not dirtying up the ocean or the air. So getting back to Franz, the great Franz Kafka, he says, well, you know, 
here you are, little girl, and you've, you're crying, and this was in a park in Berlin. And so he sat down, and uh, he's a kind fellow. I think he was in maybe his 20, early, maybe early 20s at that time. And he says, so what happened? And she says, uh, I lost my favorite doll. I can't find her. So he puts his manuscript down, because he was very, very like Einstein, all focused into what he was doing and his hair all over the place. It was like, he was very much a student of making sure he was always writing. And so he says, okay, I'm gonna help you find it. In other words, you know, some little girl in the park, he wants to try to have her experience herself back again because she's now in sadness. She's now in forlorn, she's now had a loss. She's, and they searched, and they searched, and they searched for, oh, I think hours throughout the park, and they walked to every place she'd been. Finally, at the end, he had to admit she'd lost the doll. Maybe. But he said, maybe. Meet me here tomorrow. Same bench. And we'll see, maybe the doll or somebody found the doll. So the next day, he comes back to the park bench. Good old Franz, the hyper student that he is, working and manuscripting all the time. You've seen the genius type before. And what's so wonderful about him is like he took time out of being this person who's always producing things to help this girl find a doll. So what does he do? He comes back to help her find the doll, but this time he said, you know, we still haven't found the doll yet, have we? She said, no, and I'm getting more and more sad. This is my only real love thing in my own home. You know, that's what I feel the closest to. And so he said, tell you what, and he pulls from outside, uh, from the inside of his uh, wonderful sport coat, uh, or he pu pulls a letter, a wonderful letter from a sport coat. It wasn't a wonderful, because as most writers in those days, uh, he was, uh, you know, working hard at creating and not financially supporting himself too well, but he was genius. So he said, guess what, little girl? I have a letter here that was written by the doll. And it said, please don't cry. And so she read the letter and it said, please don't cry, had her name. Of course, Franz is the one that wrote it, but she didn't know that. And she said, please don't cry. He said, it, the doll says in the letter, I took a trip to see the world, to go find out what life's all about. And I'm going to write you about all my adventures every place I go. And so all of a sudden, they had this interest about what's gonna go on with this doll, you know? And since he was like, for him to write is like the rest of us just to scratch the side of your face, he was that brilliant at writing genius material. And so he said that, you know, we'll start a, a meeting club here. Um, and believe it or not, he met, Kafka met with this young girl as she was growing up. Uh, at that bench until uh, Kafka died. And he had another letter and another letter and another letter that was part of this entire saga, a true story in Kafka's life, where he would read her the adventures of this doll and the conversations that she had with Kafka about the doll and what it all meant, she found adorable. So all of a sudden, now she's excited about finding about her friend, the doll, and what the doll's experiencing out there in life. All the adventures. And Kafka, who knew a lot about the positives and the negatives about life, went through all the adventures, the good, bad, sad, happy ones and everything. But, you know, it got to be after a number of months that Kafka was called away to go do a, a project or a book with one of the famous people in those days. And, uh, he said, you know, I better get her a doll uh, to replace. And so he brought her a doll. And um, he met her uh, where their usual place was, meeting in the park in Berlin. And um, with a lot of people around, uh, you know, birds and people walking in carriages. It's quite beautiful. If you ever go to Berlin to see this park, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, but the girl didn't like the doll. 
She said, that doesn't look like my doll at all. You know, she was friends with him so she could tell him the truth. She says, that, you know, that doesn't make me feel good. That doll's different, doesn't look the same or anything. That doll's changed. What happened? That's not my doll. And so she started to withdraw. And he says, there's a letter that came with, this, with the doll that she brought back. The new doll for the girl, but Kafka had brought this doll. So here's what the doll wrote. So I'll read to you what the doll wrote. My travels have changed me. I've learned so much, so much I understand about people and the world and adventures and love and happiness. My trip is fantastic. And that's caused this wonderful growth. And ergo my change in appearance or demeanor. And so the little girl hugged the doll, the new doll, and she brought the doll home as a true story. And how do we know this? Because the little girl actually grew up and made this a public story, but she took the doll home and she's totally happy. And her upset about the other one being gone was nothing, just like if you'd have lost a job and all of a sudden you had to go look for a new job and all of a sudden you found a new job, but it wasn't the same as the previous one, but it was different, but it was still wonderfully, you know, adorable. And she was totally happy with the new doll. There's nothing wrong. It's just, you know, a little bit different. And the difference maybe makes all the difference. <clears throat> So the sad part of the story is that Kafka died a year later, so he didn't get to find out the rest of the story, but we do, because, believe it or not, that's why truth is so much more exciting than fiction. Many years later, this now adult girl found a letter, little tiny letter, inside the doll, and it was signed by Kafka. So. You wanna know what the letter said? Here it is. And so it was dear to the young lady's name. But the important part is the quote. Everything, he, the doll's telling her, you love in life will probably be lost. But in the end, love will return in another way. Embrace the change. It is inevitable. Growth and change are inevitable. Together, we can shift the pain into wonder and love. But it's up to us to consciously and intentionally create that connection. So the part in there that I added just to the very end where it says, but it's up to us to consciously and intentionally create that connection. It's just because he's talking to the doll, he's talking to her, and so I figured the doll, or Franz, with all his incredible insights, is talking to us, because he's one of the first people to really embrace so much of philosophy just in very straightforward information. But it's, he says, embrace the change he's talking to her. It's inevitable for growth, but together we can shift that pain into wonder and love because what she said, everything up there, everything you love will probably be lost. But in the end, love itself, what do you wanna call it? God, Mother Nature, Holy Spirit, your genius state, all your great aid, functioning at maximum capacity so that you can really knock it out of the park and have a great time with your, your life and your physicality and your financial and your inner relationships with people and just be wonderfully winning and having other people win and the world environment winning with you. It's gonna go through changes to get there, but the love power to do all that's just gonna return in a way you haven't discovered yet. So it'll be an adventure. And that's what today's about is that how we're gonna take on that adventure because the little girl who published this later uh, actually wrote a line that she says, I learned whenever I hurt from a misinterpretation that that's just a part of me. You can hear a little girl saying that. 
that's just a part of me that wants to not let go. And I found out that I can just let go and just like loving the new doll, experience the wonderfulness and the love that's within me and that's flowing through you with the energy at all times, if we'll allow it and not be, you know, not letting go of the fact that, well, it's different now, but let's discover how much more wonderful it can be and how much more wonderful we can grow into what we can be. And so that's what the doll wanted us all to know is that we can let go just like she was able to let go and start loving the new doll and have a totally wonderful nurturing experience. So is it that you're gonna be able now to distinguish? Well, that's what the whole talk's about. What things are going to be so important to you that you're gonna all of a sudden discover that that's where your freedom comes and that's where your power comes and that's where your lovability comes from. We're gonna identify how to access that with the energy you know, part of the whole God-given process we've got here. And that then you're gonna experience a freedom, just like she never would have experienced this love experience with the new doll if it wasn't for Franz coming in there and doing all this, like almost like God coming down and teaching her. It's a, it's a freedom that you never even knew, um, otherwise it wouldn't have been a discovery. And people feel bad about like, oh, I should have known. You should have known nothing. Anything you should have known or would have known is not part of the game down here. Part of the game down here is, here we are. Here we are. It's the beginning of Disneyland. You just walked into State Street. and We've changed everything since yesterday. So get ready. And you're going to find out that the joy of every person that you get to connect with and people that you can work with, people you find you can partially work with, whoever they are, you're going to be able to keep calling out wonderful, wonderful Franz Kafka kind of support through the energy supplying you. You remember in the past, I gave you a talk about Fred's. So he was a Fred that showed up for her, but it's all waiting for us where in the future. And everybody says, well, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I thought the only way to access my power is to be here in the now. Yes, that's partially true, but remember the now is not something you can catch. It's going too fast. It's going too fast. In the past is over, the doll's lost. The now is like this, and they haven't found the doll. Okay, every second, that's my finger going like that every second for every minute, and that's just an you know, a, a attempt at being in the now. You couldn't catch it, couldn't catch it. So then, in the future hasn't occurred yet, but there's a space between the now and the future as it, like a Venn diagram, blends from the now into the future. And that space is where your creativity, power, godliness is being supported. The angel is coming down, Franz Kafka, to give you a new doll, to give you a new life, to give you something else. But you gotta go searching for it, and you gotta go asking for it, and you gotta express yourself. She even expressed when, well, this doll isn't like the other doll at all. I don't know if I wanna like it. Where she'd gotten that previous training, which is, you know, everything has to be the same as the way, whoever, anyway, your great, 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 you know, Neanderthal or great uncle or great aunt or great famous queen of England said it was supposed to be. And you can see that it's the exploring the expansion of growth, which is if you look at a plant that grows, we always consider it's growing up, it's growing out, but it's definitely not contracting. So growth means that you're gonna experience new things, new molecules, new experiences, and to be able to love them and love those new experiences, the new doll, to love the enjoyment of the life, Franz, you know, with his genius, was opening up that there's an energy way to approach that. And today we're gonna to go through the techniques on how to get in every single situation what's going on in the present and the future, your joy of being powerful and making the correct decision and you, because some people might say, well, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I come from the Matrix. And remember, the Matrix raised everybody in this world, the world that's the default, you know, fallback kind of milieu culture. Then there's, you know, in some parts of the world, the Matrix is worse than others. But in most places, there's always the counterforce by physics that for everything good, it has to be some negative that opposes it just so they both can exist. But it's up to us to choose where we want to be on that continuum, whether we want to be on the continuum of, it's not working, it's terrible, it's all bad. Remember, that's the black side of the yin-yang symbol where it's uh, 
and remember the yin-yang yin -yang symbol, which all this material I'm giving you is all sourced from source energy, which was discovered by your wonderful, you know, great contributor, um, Lao Tzu, but before him, there was other great, great grandmasters. Uh, and since then, you know, even Franz is a master in terms of giving you a complete understanding of things and things he wrote. Now, for you and me, well, if the black side is that things are not working, uh, the white side is the thing where things are working, there's a little black spot there for a little challenge all the time. What's this black spot with one white dot in it? Well, the black spot on the yin yang symbol, I mean, the black surface with one white dot is like, you know, things are just, you're trying to play a game that doesn't work down here on this planet and you're gonna get penalized for it. And every time you get penalized for it, you're gonna stay in the black and every time you actually pull it off and have that white light as a little hope, then you get to shift and go to the other side. But that line between the two, black and white, is so thin. It's infinitesimally thin. Infinitesimally thin. And when I even had to practice learning how to do calligraphy with the Grand Master in China with these brushes, you know, every time I would make the line there in between, you know, I'd have to just because it's on you know, rice paper, silk paper, it's all very thin, it bleeds out. So you, you have to be able to do it all in the energy. And so what happened was, eventually I was able to make it so thin, because he, he, he would tap me on the shoulder and say, you have to be able to immediately morph through and go to the other side if you choose. And the choice is always up to you, and that's what people miss, the importance of what that line's all about. So the choice was up to the little girl, but who supported her? Franz. And who is, was supporting Franz in doing that? Well, his great, big-hearted, loving, which is part of the great eight, right? Because you always want to be doing the great eight, which is having winning relationships with other people that they get your empathy, your, compare, your, your compassion, your caring, and that they know that you want them to grow like a tall tree in all eight, and they get, you know, so that they can give love once they get all filled up with it, and they can also get joy and creativity, Einstein brain getting smarter every day, getting younger and more fantastically, physically stronger. This is all part of the grade eight. And also not only that, but actually being, you know, able to stay in the flow and zone all the time so that you're methodically going, okay, we lost a doll, what's next? Let's keep going. And looking forward to things in life so that you stay in that state that so many people think, well, meditation is really something I do during parts of the day. Really, actually, the whole experience of meditation, once you use the energy for success techniques for it, is that you get the goal of wanting to be in that Satori state all the time so that you constantly are able to have sufficiency and overflowing power so that you're able to make it so other people can really enjoy whatever is going on in their life when they're around you and that you're getting to enjoy them and your interaction. And it's a contribution towards growth. So how would you do that though? Well, the first thing is your pushback is gonna go, well, it hasn't been that easy for me and I've lost more than one doll and um, I've lost, you know, I didn't hit a home run every time I went up to bat. And I know some kids when they started out, they didn't hit any balls at all. In fact, they wanted to quit baseball. But with an energy treatment with me one day and just doing practices, uh, the guy just really blossomed because he represents what each one of you represents. It doesn't matter what age you are or even what family you come from or even what your financial status is or whether you came from wonderful digs or poor digs, you're still a tall tree waiting to grow up and expand that's all your obligation is your contract here with Mother Nature, God, the universe, Holy Spirit. That's your only contract is just to keep growing it, but growing in a way that contributes. So people are going to say, well, wait a minute. Um, the part I don't like about growing is that it's scary because um, you can fail. Well, of course you're going to fail. But who taught you to be scared? Well, everybody that's the first lesson on this planet. So if you were to be learning on this planet, and I'm not saying that you're, you get to live here forever, but the quicker you learn this one lesson, the more heaven on earth 
you can create, which is that, you know, that if it's always here we are, that there's going to be resistance, just like if, if, for, if all of life is a vibration, everything's vibrating just at different densities, it's all energy, as Einstein said, E, that's it, E energy, which is just different vibrational numbers of, of speeds of movement of electrons, protons, and atoms, this equals everything, mass, everything. So if you're gonna have to use that energy, how are you gonna access it? And energy for success, the Einstein state, using the practices I'm gonna show you later and the breathing practices uh, and the guided visualizations and the rapid trans transformational vibrational techniques, you're gonna to start to see that there's a way you can choose. Because now you're getting that, it's sort of like basketball in that if you choose to practice every day, because I played a lot of basketball, my dad was a big basketball player, he was all state and was just, it, it was great that I got to learn that in basketball and life had a lot of similarities in that you have to choose each moment whether I'm going to shoot from here or whether I'm going to try to pull a fake and dribble around the guy. But then I had to learn how to develop a fake where I could bounce the ball from one hand to the other without looking down so he would know what, I, that my opponent wouldn't know what I was doing. Now then, I've got to be able to keep dribbling with the other hand, so I had to learn how to dribble with my left hand, and then pass the ball to my right hand, and then keep dribbling and go in for the layup, which is a reenactment of one thing I actually did in getting, out, in getting uh, successful to make the basketball team. And, and being able to develop that talent, did I start that way uh, in day one? No. But I remember lying down uh, on the floor at my parents' home one day, right before uh, tryouts, and I'm going, well, here we are. And, you know, we've been shooting buckets in the backyard for a long time. We played on a lot of teams. And um, here I am in seventh grade, and I want to make the team. And, wow, is it going to even be possible? I don't know. And then which team and what are the coaches are going to be like? All these unknowns. But what gets you through the unknowns is the desire to actually perform, to actually be one of those great players who learns how to shoot the bucket under all kinds of circumstances and gets them to do it with style and with joy and with, like Michael Jordan, with pleasure about enjoying being able to put the ball in to the uh, net, through the net. And I can tell you every time I ever swished a shot, every time I ever did a hook shot and it went in, every time it banked in, it, essentially, I was saying, thank God. But thank, because I knew that it was, where did I get that power? But so I didn't know where God was. So I just sort of assume, assume, assumed that God was just involved in everything here since I didn't create it. And in this power that I kept utilizing to learn, get it, learn, which means to discover. That's all learning is, because before you learned it, you were ignorant. And then you learn by discovering things you didn't know, but along the way, there was a lot of practicing with my left hand and right hand, left hand, right hand. I even learned, to, you know, growing up in Kentucky, uh, I even played basketball on days that it snowed because, and, and even in college, because it was fun just to practice all the time, no matter what the weather was, and see how much this wonderful energy substance that we're able to draw on all the time is filling my body and allowing me to do these, what I call them, expansions into the miracle of the, what your body can do in sports. And I just thought that we were just meant to enjoy our expansion into sports because I'd seen, you know, the pros, other college players, guys in my neighborhood who kept getting better and better. And I said, well, I can do that too, so can you. And it's not just in your sports, but it's in each of your grade eight. So you don't have to stand on the sidelines. There's always some sport you can do, even if it's you know, just doing stretching. That can be a whole sport. A lot of yoga is stretching. So sports can be very, very determined by what you pick. And your expansion and your genius state, it can be by what you pick. But how do you start getting ready to pick? Because some people say, well, wait, I don't, I don't even know that I'm in the right space to pick. I could be just fooling myself right now. It's like when you buy a stock, and you say, oh, this stock is gonna go up, everybody's doing it, all my friends are doing it, I've heard it's a good thing, or I have special intuition about the stock market, and I can feel when a stock is gonna go up, even though it's just a little print on the paper there or on the computer screen, I somehow have this ability. 
Now that's called hubris. That's not your God-given gift to develop it by learning. There's no learning there. That's saying you have pre-knowledge, you're pre-judging. And what do we do by learning about the entire thing about minorities and everything else that's going on in the world today, thank goodness, is that pre-judging people for anything is a mistake. They don't deserve that because it's inaccurate. Just like the little girl said uh, when she got, the, got older and got the, found the little letter in the new doll, she said it was all from misinformation, you know, that I couldn't enjoy these new adventures, that what I'd lost was something that was for that period, but now I'm on, not like that was bad, but that now I'm forcibly, because of circumstances, uh, going to participate and if the doll does come back the other way, great, but now I've got this new doll. Franz is the angel bringing it in. And so I have this new day, and what am I gonna do with this new day? Look at your new day as if it's a choice to whether you're going to pick the new doll, whatever it's gonna be, and make that something that's going to be wonderful for you by doing your practices and putting yourself in the place that, now wait a minute, we were just talking about hubris, where you're going around going, everything's great, doesn't matter if I have a car accident or if I, uh, you know, a tornado hits me or something. No, I was going down that tunnel because I wanted you to realize with well, a big pushback on this planet is so many people. And that's the source of all the unrest and disease and sadness. So many people have been sort of hoodwinked by the matrix, the black side, where all of a sudden you feel like, oh gosh, you know, the, the, whatever I'm doing is correct. And you see those people zooming through intersections all the time. So be careful when you're driving, but you'll see those people zooming through contracts with you also, zooming through other things that they say. And some people call it, well, that person isn't necessarily always accurate or, or telling the truth. None of us can be accurate. Not make, we need compassion not only for the people that are way off the grid, but compassion for yourself in that being accurate is, is, is your job down here. On this blue, beautiful planet, your job is to be accurate on can I pull in the energy and be a contribution at all times? And how do I do that? To be accurate because here I thought I was right, you know, uh, drinking my coffee and listening to the radio and trying to change uh, uh, a number on my cell phone uh, while I'm holding the wheel and not looking out the window, just glancing at everyone. I thought I was right because I thought it and I felt it. So wait a minute. That's the point here. You can each moment have thoughts and feelings that aren't accurate. Here we are. So I'll continue if you want, but you might be really upset right now. You might be somebody who says, I'm not gonna hear that, I'm born perfect. Perfect what? To learn, not perfect to know everything already, otherwise there'd be no reason for you to be here. There would be no reason for you to be here. Do you get there's no reason? Some people, the existentialists have said, well, this whole thing is going nowhere and doesn't matter and it's billions of years and what happens? They're missing the whole point. That's like saying there's no reason to be in Disneyland versus being in a, a, a pit of snakes. That's crazy. You've got this body, wake up, decisions on taking care of this body, that's one of the great eight, is going to really pay off and, pay, and decisions on taking care of this body by doing practices that I'm always teaching you in each um, module, this module two, that you're also going to always, always, always be getting stronger each day so that you can choose the new doll and the new experience and the new adventure and expand with it so that you get to learn, remember we're on learning plan, which is the same word as I didn't know it before, now it's a discovery. Oh, that's why Franz called it an adventure. What's an adventure? It means that, oh gosh, these are things we didn't know about, but ah, water slides are fun. Ah, going to Italy is fun. So, you know, because he wrote her letters from the doll's travels everywhere. So what about you? Are you looking at each day as an adventure? Now's the time to write that down. Are you looking at each morning as an adventure? No, you're, if it's up to the matrix, you're gonna, I should have be, in better shape than I am right now physically. I should have be mentally, I should be financially in better shape. I should compare myself to somebody who doesn't even exist, because whenever the people look deep into um, anything, they find out that perfection is a moving target. So for you to have this perfect life, it's even if it's one day you hit a you know home run, next day there'll be different weather conditions, uh, different uh, barometric pressure, different, you know, it, what, what humidity, your muscles and bones are gonna be in different shape. 
you're in a constant moving flux and you get to choose, which means learn, which means you're accepting the adventure on what's the best WWW choice, winning choice for you and other people that's gonna allow all grade eight to blossom and for you to really love learning how to hit basketball, dribble with one hand on this side and then this side and then and shake your head and move around and then be able to put the ball in the basket and oh boy, oh, when did I learn that? Not immediately, it took many, many days of practice, but what a joy learning each step along the way. So. The big problem is that people, just like she said about the doll, people have misinformation, like they have feelings that they thought that now that I've lost my doll, everything's gone. You've had that feeling. Whether it was a doll, whether it was a person, whether it was a financial investment. But your purpose in being here is totally different. Your purpose in being here is to be able to pull in as much energy as you can and to be able to measure each of your grade eight, you know, bit by bit, and then watch yourself expand. And so therefore this whole thing about making mistakes is, is like gotta be set up so that your mistakes are small enough and you're, you're reviewing your life each day so that you're learning from them and therefore you're working with people who can, you know, allow you to grow and learn because they're making mistakes too. It's not like they're better than you. And it's not like your image in your head, which you think is perfection, is better than you. You think it is, don't you? You think that's your advisor there, that some Akashic record. No, no, there's a being state. And Eckhart talks about this. He's a great guy. He says to be here now. But what he means by now means at absent all the noise about where's my doll, where's my life, where's my joy, where's my health, where's my fun, where's my this, where's my that. In other words, all this reflection on the past, reactioning to the past, no value, because there's no knowledge there. If you had a solution, you wouldn't be bemoaning it. And you can't talk about, well, I'm going to create that in the future just by stomping your feet. You've got to empower yourself. You've got to nourish the plant. So nourishing the plant is recognizing that it's gonna take more vibrations. How are you gonna get those vibrations? Well, of course you're gonna work on one of the things, which is you know, the foods that you eat, but that's only one of the, one a part of your health. But energy for success is about that you're getting younger and stronger and more powerful each day, and that your brain's growing and getting more bright and more able and more specific and more able to remember all kinds of things and that your ability to be compassionate for other people and yourself is growing in this whole thing called that love exists for you and for other people and for everything you're doing. Uh-oh, everything I'm doing? No, 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 no. You're saying I was pulled into this bad situation or I was caught in that, I'm not gonna love that. Well, that's why love in the English language, and we've been criticized by this and I've traveled so much, I'm, and, I, and I recommend everybody study linguistics. Uh, I, I recognize, if you ever get a chance to read a book by Hayakawa on uh, language and thought and action, it's, it's really phenomenal and that really does matter that we have some words that really don't mean anything at all compared to what they're supposed to mean. And in other languages, maybe they get 20 words for the same thing, but the point is, what's your feeling with each one of those? What's your vibrational sense with each one of those? Okay, so your vibrational sense with the word I feel or I dislike or I should have or this isn't okay is all that negative doll stuff. What about, and, you're not, and don't take love as meaning like, love means like I'm gloriously flying around and uh, it, the world is just you know, lifting me up in every direction. Although that feeling is possible, you have to get there as you go up the mountain. The question is, can you get to the first stage, which is, I'm gonna be accepting humans, other humans, including me, that this is our apparatus, and this is the wonderful planet we've got, and all those planets way out there really is not as important to me as the water that I drink every day, and what we do to the ocean, and the air, and how we relate to each other, all that's way more important, and to be able to do that, I can't be knocked off my horse all the time every time there's going to be some resistance. And you're gonna say, well, I don't like resistance. This is part of the deal. 
And the question is, just take the resistance at bite-sized levels and don't get too, you know, don't get your reach way too far out there past your grasp, right? So what you can grasp, you know, go step by step. That's how I learned to dribble both with both hands, shoot with both hands, and, you know, do all kinds of tricks with basketballs. It was wonderful as a kid, but the joy I want you to have is the joy of waking up and knowing even though you have a thought or a feeling that that's not you. That's not you. That's the black side of the yin yang symbol. That is here we are again, choice time. So you're gonna get to choose always the downgrading, the cleaning up of this planet, the degradation, the destruction. Because remember, people who are always, it's like Stalin, although he was a bad guy uh, and destroyed a lot of people, you know, he finally got destroyed too. It always comes back to those destroyers that that part of the soil is going to just, you know, be refertilized. But people who are doing good and creating things that continue to work, then you get wonderful results. And that's our job. How can we choose that? Well, one of the ways to choose that is to do guided breathing visualizations, rapid transformation vibrational technique, which is RVTV. And I'm going to give you one right now that is very much associated with empowering you for your day so that you can start to choose. And we're going to get even deeper in the second half of this uh, with practices and also some of the more intense decisions you have to make in life every day. But let's take the gloves off. Come on. I've been a doctor over 30 years. There's no patient who ever came in here and said, oh, everything is great. That's why I'm seeing you. No, they say everything you, you took care of was great. Uh, thank you very much, but I still have this problem. Can you refer me to a cardiologist? Can you refer me to an orthopedic person for my knee? Can you refer me to a dermatologist? Everybody's got something else because there's always going to be something else, but it's not something else like it wasn't supposed to be there as a learning experience. So write that down. You've written down adventure, and now you wrote down learning experience. And you wrote down the beginning, here we are. And in the beginning, hopefully you wrote down new doll, and it all turned out wonderfully because she was able to experience the word we use is love, but you could consider the word love a vibrational state of all eight operating fully and you having more than enough resource, more than enough source energy that you can, if needed, right in the middle of your manuscript or you're writing so furiously, see a little girl who's crying and put it down and go, well, what do you need? How can I help you? You won't have that desire, that empathy, to help unless you're filled with the knowledge. That's why some people think that bad people who get away with a lot of stuff are really happy people. No, they are not. They are not. It's been studied a million times. Inside their image of themselves is smaller than that. Do you think Hitler's image of himself was fantastic? No. You think Stalin's was fantastic? No. That's what they had to overcome by trying to create a mess on the matrix side. And the only reason this planet allows for the mess is because it's almost like squeezing the toothpaste tube, it's gonna keep, you're gonna keep squeezing it until finally the good toothpaste comes out, okay? But you won't get it out until you have to squeeze the toothpaste. So the resistance is that part that clamps down and you just gotta go, okay, it's raining today, looks like I need to put on you know, my rain shoes and my glasses, my hat, but I'm still going outside. This was my experience when I taught in London because I used to walk to the hospital and walk in the hospital while I was working you know, coming from California where, you know the song, it never rains in Southern California. Well, you know, I brought the worst umbrella, not knowing, and, and bought one finally at the hotel because it really rained on the way to the hospital every day and on the way back, and that everybody expects, that's normal. Plus, those cabs, if you ever seen them, they're big, tall things. When they come by, they can swoosh all this water all over your feet and your legs. So everybody else knew that. I didn't learn that until I got swooshed. But the question is, did I die in that swoosh? Just because my pants legs were wet and it made a funny story when I got to the hospital and put on my greens? No, it was just a thing as part of the new doll, the new adventure, the new thing about, okay, what did I learn here? Oh, you mean you get to be uncomfortable before you learn? Only if you label the pressure on the toothpaste that you have to like, just to get some toothpaste out. But if you're just gently pressing it and work your way slowly up, it's very easy to get the good out. So if you gently take a resistance and not go, well, it shouldn't be here, and rather take it on going, it's why I'm here. 
The resistance is why I'm here so that I can learn and get to the next step, get to the good that I'm supposed to learn from this. Does it mean it's good that this part of the toothpaste tube is empty? No, it's not good or bad. It's just part of the learning experience. You need to go New doll, where? Oh, further along the tube. Then you're going to press lightly, and light enough, so you don't squirt it all out and get just enough of your toothbrush, and then you're happy. So the question is, can you use each one of those things each day? You won't if you listen to the crazy man in, or crazy woman or crazy voice and thoughts and emotions that are in the noise that exists on this planet because that's part of the resistance game. It's almost like if you expected to play a video game and on the video game there was no, nobody for you to you know, have as an opponent, there'd be no game. You would just run around and go to parks and nature, which would be fine. It'd be good, it'd be nurturing, but it's not this growing experience in your expertise at being an acrobat, at being strong, at being healthy, at being really smart and discovering that what's inside of you is so much bigger and growing every day if you'll just choose it. And what's inside of you and your adventures and your friends coming to you is so much more wonderful than you can even imagine, unless you choose, you don't wanna learn, you don't wanna know, or that you already know and the way you've already decided is the way it's gonna be, which is never the case. And that's why it's that real thin space where you have to be alert, aware, and accurate each moment about am I pulling in the energy so that I'm really in a great space to be able to do this, this, and this. And some people go, oh, I can fake it. Well, unfortunately, if you fake it and you try to, I was a diver, and if you fake it when you go up there and try to bang on the board uh, with your feet, it's not the same as when you put yourself in condition of I've done this, I can feel myself doing this, I can experience myself doing this, I've got the purpose of life is to grow and being able to do this, and then let myself flow in the energy after I picture what I wanted to have happen and experience each moment, not just force myself through it, experience my foot banging on the bottom uh, edge of the board, then the other foot, and then up, and then I go, I feel it, and then twist, and then you're, you're there. Each moment can be like that. So let's do a guided breathing visualization that's gonna put you in a place where you can jump off the board just as soon as you get out of bed every day. So close your eyes, take everything off your lap, Close the door, turn off your cell phone for a second, and let's give yourself just a moment to have a break. And a guided breathing visualization, remember, you're made for this, just like you were made to learn. You are made to learn from all of your lost dolls. You were made to learn and have a better life, more joy, even though you lost the doll. And that's the thing the Matrix never wants you to know. Matrix wants you to, wants you to go, stop here, listen to this, you know, I, I was gonna say tried and true, but I, the truth is tired and true. Baloney that comes from the matrix that says, no, you can't break the four minute mile. No, young kids can't you know, make it from one stage catapult all the way into the pros. No, none of it's wrong, completely baloney. Your body is so much more powerful. Your brain is so much more powerful. Your opportunities are so much more powerful. That it doesn't matter where you're coming from unless you choose that you're stuck and that's, just accepting that noise in your head rather than doing the guided breathing visualizations and noticing that you're this robust feeling not only calm, but you're feeling that you're in the top of a meditative state all day and that your space for people and for life is one that's expansive. So keep your eyes closed and let's take a deep breath. So in taking a deep breath, one of the funniest things that I had to learn in China keep your eyes closed, was that when I was taking a deep breath, the grandmaster never thought it was any good. He thought it was lousy. And of course he blamed it on anything that I'd ever done before in life, uh, whether it was becoming a doctor or becoming a research scientist or discovering a disease or all the great things that I thought were fun that I'd done. And I thought breathing, everybody accomplishes that way early in life, not so. So the first part of every guided breathing visualization, you want to be breathing, and this goes deep. This information goes deep. So let's start with the first baby step, which is, let's take a deep breath. If judgments come up, thoughts, emotions, noise, 
That, leave that on the ground. That is not part of this process. Just put that on vacation. You, you know, let the dog service take care of that information. That dog doesn't need to be barking in your head. You're not it. So let's take that breath again. That's better. And let your mind just relax. It's between that noise where your power is going to come. Now take a deeper breath, one that's even deeper. And then take a deeper breath way deep inside your lower abdomen. And some people have learned to do this with their belly pulled in, like some pictures. And actually, the best way to empower yourself is sort of allow your whole chest just to fill up the upper chest, the middle chest, even your lower chest and abdomen all to, so that you've really found that you can get air much more than just this little tiny space wherever you consider breathing. And whenever we were, just doing practice, uh, whether we're doing physical practices or quiet practices, the grandmaster would come by and snap us with a, a bamboo rod if you weren't breathing. That would always be the thing he would find, that you weren't breathing deep enough. So how deep can you breathe? Well, deep enough so that you recognize that breath's where it's at. Now, how much is breath where it's at? Well, say you just inherited uh, the ownership of, uh, you know, five Fortune uh, 50 companies, and you just own them, and you get all the proceeds, and everybody else is still going to do the work. If you stop breathing in eight minutes, you don't own anything. You're gone. Disneyland is over. So the most important thing to you each moment should not be ignored. And so if there was a little girl who was your daughter and came up to you at three, uh, three years old, after you just woke up and said, hi, what are we doing? And you go, oh, give me a chance to wake up. It, versus, yeah, you can have boundaries, but the question is, what a joy to have this little girl come up and say hello. How many people have that? Well, you know, there's responsibilities. That's that voice. Shut it up. You don't need to hear it. You can ignore it. Just like let go of the other doll. Let it go. And you can do that by just not allowing it to have the priority and recognize it's the space in between the noise where your joy and your breathing and this quietness is going to allow you to be empowered. So you don't need to think yourself into learning. You don't need to think yourself into power. You just need to choose and then get the vibrational sense, a feeling sense that you're appreciating existing. And that's what the guided breathing visualization right now is allowing because as you appreciate your breath, what does that mean? That means you start to detect, you start to acknowledge, oh, my attention's now on that rather than on this crazy outside noise from, you know, the media. Oh, but what about the things to be afraid of? We're not using that. Fear's only around when you don't have a solution. If you have a solution, fear comes in. But you can't find the solution when fear's there. It's like they're sitting on the toilet. They're occupying the bathroom. You have to get them out. Anyone who grows up in a family with multiple you know, relatives and kids knows what it's like that there's only one bathroom. So you have to wait. So get them out. Make some noise. Bang on the door. Hey, somebody else. Let me have a chance just like in trial for basketball or having a new doll, give it a chance. So what's the chance you want to give it? The chances that you can choose and not knowing whether your choice is going to be correct or not. So let's do some choices. Let's take a deep breath all the way down into our thighs. Yeah, you're made up of so much space. The whole universe is made up of space. Breathe into it. The substance of space is your power. Breathe it in. You know, in the creation of this world, if everything was meant, and a lot of people who were pretty bright have figured this out, that if it was all meant for your good, then breathing was devised at all. Uh, I mean, you could have made something that was a robot, doesn't have to breathe, it just worked on electricity. Yet breathing is something that is absolutely necessary for all life, which means movement, to occur, which means growing, which means adventure, which means learning, which we're back to the edge of the bed again, which is appreciating that you're taking your breathing. So in a guided breathing visualization, 
keep your eyes still closed and appreciate the locations that you can feel your breath in. This is the first step. So you can feel breathing in your neck. Then you can take another deep breath. You don't have to let it out right away. Then you can feel a deep breath in your upper chest. You don't have to let it out. You've got more to take in. Then you can breathe throughout your abdomen. Yeah, you've got lots of spaces in there too. Look at it expand. Oh, you've got more to discover. You can breathe into your pelvis. Go ahead. And you can breathe into your low back and watch the part of your lower spine just sort of rotate back and forth like a fish's tail as it goes back and forth, back and forth with each breath. So all this movement's occurring because that was set up for a reason for your good. But it's not just because you need the oxygen to keep going, you need the oxygen to keep pulling in the energy to keep growing. So it's not just maintaining your situation, whatever it is, of lost doll. We're gonna create a Fred, we're gonna create a Franz who's gonna come forward and something, some way, we're gonna find a way to create something wonderful today in each of the great eight areas, but you have to choose. Now, you keep, we keep coming back to you have to choose. Well, because you can always choose, and this is what created the mess on this planet for so long, you can always choose to try, you know, to try the disaster bill, try hedonism, or try staying up all night for three days in a row, and then try to function in sports or in something that normally takes your abilities to be sharp. We've tested it at the hospital a million times, and you can see that sleep deprivation, uh, anger, anger, incitement, uh, depression, uh, negativism, all those will reduce your ability to perform versus your ability to perform when you're in a different state. So we take the same person, your abilities can change on a spot. And that's the way this world was invented so that you could learn quickly and scamper by choosing, 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 choosing and becoming more alert. And that's why I love to watch ice hockey because those guys are choosing so fast to skate so fast around people. It's amazing that, you know, they've really got this choose, 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 move my skates so fast. And soccer is, you know, it's just as exciting in basketball because people are choosing every second about how to make a move and still not foul the person, which means win-win. In other words, I have the right, you have the right to win just as long as I don't step on you as I'm trying to get around you or trying to get to where I want to go. So competition is not meant to be not there. Remember, there'd be no video games. Keep breathing. But the access to resistance, which is all comp comp you know, competition is, which is the access of you pulling in, in the energy in the face of the new resistance and then learning is the process of here we are another opportunity. So it's only the previous voices or thoughts that made that young girl be so upset about the loss of her doll. But once it was the adventures of the stories that the, her friend, the doll, was going through, she was quite happy. And then when she got the new doll, that was the disappointment, another new learning adventure experience, resistance, something you wouldn't choose necessarily from previous information from who knows where, who knows where you got that, but in the testing right now, it's raining, so you need a new choice. You need to pick umbrella if you're in London. So you need to choose, oh, well, I have something wonderful here. What is it? How can I, oh, I can breathe even deeper. And as I breathe, I notice my entire upper spine, middle spine, lower spine, all of it just sort of becomes fluid, almost like a fish. It just keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. And as you breathe, each moment that's occurring, and now the excitement comes because as we're breathing, you can like relax back a little further. And as you notice the space where your forehead is, that there's sort of just a little bit of a glimmer of a light. Maybe the light's a little bit fragmented off to the side or off to the bottom, but if you watch it slowly, it will, yes, by your observation, which is what appreciation is. You're appreciating what's there by your observer observing closer and closer, which is furthering your appreciation that that light actually can condense down to just being this little tiny gold, silver, platinum 
sort of rough surface ball that some places are smooth, some places have an edge to them. But the fact that it's not, there's no perfect in, even inside this space area. Everything has a changeability to it. But you can breathe and that ball actually follows you now as you take a breath and when you can breathe it down, 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 down through your spine, down through your neck. Those of you who want to like really embrace all the immune system of your neck, you can allow this that gold, silver, platinum ball to just blow up into a thousand gold, silver, platinum balls. It can divide and close. That's how you were created, just by dividing of cells. Same thing occurs here. So it can divide and go through all the parts of your thyroid, all the parts of your parathyroid glands, all the parts of your submaxillary glands, all the part of your immune system that's all situated with lymph nodes you know, carefully placed underneath your clavicles in safe places and lymph nodes carefully placed along the posterior part of your spine so that everything is like in a safe space so that you're always able to pull in, what was that Einstein said? Energy, yeah, pull in energy. Where is the energy? Starts with your nourishment of the breath, taking in the breath. So every moment, that story about I'm glad to breathe is really, really, I'm glad that sensor and appreciating it is top priority. And so as I'm breathing and as I'm gaining more experience of that gold, silver, platinum ball following my instructions, I can relax even further and then breathe it all the way down into your lungs and let it just explode into 100,000 little gold, silver, platinum balls and go through all throughout each space of your lungs so that for the rest of the day, you can make a goal that I'm, or even I'm just gonna breathe deeper and just keep cleaning out my system. Because on this planet, it's obvious that there's a waste management system that is called the matrix. And you leave a banana out for you know, a certain number of days, it not only deteriorates, turns color, but actually crumbles and then gets, disappears. And what's so exciting is that you have the choice to have things either grow and become more wonderful or say, I don't want to and watch them just disappear. So you can prove the point of deterioration from the matrix day after day because that's how things get routine. That's how things get like same old, same old. That's how things get to have a feeling that I don't think I, I can do it. All those are not you. That's just noise. It's been proven. You must choose to say, I'm going to learn and explore and enjoy each step along the way. And you'd make the step just as big as you feel like making it and then expand to the next one and the next one and the next one. So let's breathe throughout all the way down. Let's choose to breathe all the way down to our thighs and our knees and between all those ligaments and just smooth off all the surfaces on the top of the tibia and the bottom of the femur. You know, you've got that tibial plateau there, that big bone that you call your lower leg and then you've got your femur and you've got your fibula and what's so exciting is all those bones were created to just slide by each other it's amazing i mean if we when we create robots you know there's no sliding around everything's sort of in a gear which fits into another gear which then has to stay in a certain place and then we measure the tendency of how long that can last and yet the human body is set up so that you've got these ligaments there that constantly are even re-nourishing themselves when you injure them and if you want to grow them to be stronger, you injure them just a little bit, which means that you're tearing the little fibrils, very tiny, you can see them under the microscope, of certain parts, and then they get stronger. So you have a repair mechanism that's all about adventure and learning. Just don't negate that that's there by saying, oh, it's there, of course, I don't have to do anything about it. No, you have to do something about everything. On this planet, you're the one. Breathe deep. You're the Neo. Breathe. You're the one who chooses. Am I going to be sucked into some mal knowledge that means nothing, that's all made up? Or can I like create and keep having one great thing after another? It's going to be not a good idea to choose against that because every time you choose against it, you get a lesson that that didn't work and therefore there's pain associated with that. So just on the pain basis alone, forget about fear, 
just thought, if I don't like pain, let's start appreciating our breath, that we can breathe all these gold, silver, platinum dots, whether you don't see them, whether you just feel them, or you imagine them. The question is, you're participating, and participating happens with the body. Without the body, there's no participation. Nothing. Go to a funeral, you'll see nothing's moving. It's over, done. It's just like the teacher saying, pencils down, hand in your paper. It's over once you go to no movement. So keep breathing and now breathe all those gold, silver, platinum dots throughout your feet and let them go all the way down to the, you know, maybe 100 feet into the earth, way deep in there. Go down 100 feet. Go down there deep. Feel that soil. You're just grinding through it like a drill. And you see dirt moving and rocks moving and there's water and some kind of oily and maybe some rocks and sandstone and metamorphic stone and all conglomerate stone and osmium, all kinds of, you know, igneous stone, every kind of stone, every, there's so many wonderful things. Plus there's all kinds of little tiny insects or bugs and things living down. What are they there for? You can find out. You can see they're there for you once you realize you're the chooser. So choose to be full of the energy and safe and looking forward to life. Yes, it's up to you. And choose that you're going to expand through this and go step by step. And so let's go down another 100 feet. And then let's just feel all the energy coming from this part of the earth, this ground that, that's so nourished and was here way before you, way before you ever got to play this game. This game was set up, all the props before you got here. And the nourishment, the vibrations that come from the planet itself feed you. It's not just air, which you need entirely, but it's also the water. It's also all the minerals because you're made of all that same stuff. So you, we pull out the minerals, you're gone. You want to make it through some, you say you ate all the right foods, but you don't have all the right minerals each day, they go, you won't make it because the system requires that kind of balance. So the balance all gets created by you waking up to the joy that you get to be Neo. You get to choose to pull it all in, pull it in. You're 200 feet, you've got, you're above the earth and you've also got a channel going with this gold, silver, platinum drill all the way down 200 feet. And it's all being pulled up into you like you're pulling up your this wonderful well, you know, like they have an oil well that pulls up all, you're pulling up all the wonderful energies from all the elements, the gold, silver, platinum, you know, zinc, every single thing is there for you to pull in. Just pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. All of them just let it go all the way through your body to you, through your body. Just, you know, have all these different colors from all the different minerals, because you know, when you look at them, they all are different colors, and when you burn them, they come different flames, and when you uh, disintegrate them, they have different colors and, and different signs. It's all wonderfully coordinated, and it can come right up through the top of your head, too. Just keep bringing it up as it gets stronger and stronger, and it's way up into the sky. And then bring it back down into the earth and just feel that you, you know, you've got your spot here. You've got your spot here. You've got your space here. And you chose that space, and you get to keep it and make it work forever as long as you keep choosing to keep breathing and enjoying and appreciating it and appreciating each one of the spaces that you're going to explore. So let's explore up into the clouds. Let's let that beam go up even higher above us and through the clouds into this gorgeous blue that's so nourishing, you just want to sort of relax there and feel that, oh, there's so many vibrational substances that are part of source energy that you can feel and take in from every single angle. And there's so many, so many new places to find your way of bringing it in, just like new ways of finding that you can dribble with your left hand and your right hand. There's so many new things that with this body you get to explore. Take it in. And with a smile, Notice that you can come back here anytime, but you can also lightly slide down that gold, silver, platinum beam as it comes all the way back down to through the blue and through the clouds and then slowly comes back to this wonderful beach where you'll notice it's a little different than any beach you've been on before because the water is so clear and the waves are so nice and gentle and they're so beckoning to nourish, nourish, nourish you because you're on the nourishing side of life now. You're on the side where the ocean's here for you. 
It's here to support you. It's here to feed you all the time. The planet's mostly made up of water, nourishment. And oxygen is here with all the plants that are behind you, feeding you. And you're this wonderful chooser who gets to have this apparatus that functions so well once you choose the things that allow it to really grow and learn and learn and grow. And so then, you know, as with all renourishment spots and chapters, it's good to like say, okay, let's lock this in. And so when you're ready, keep your eyes closed, experience like it's time, like a change in the season where a leaf falls from a tree and it reaches the bottom and now you're just gonna change and adapt to another season, but robustly now because you're all nourished. And we're gonna rub our hands and just re, you know connect and collect and maintain this energy and allow it to flow. Just rub your hands, keep your eyes closed and put your hands over your eyes. Yeah, this is what you get to do day in and day out. The minute you wake up, you can take all this in starting from the minute you get your eyes open. There's no personality involved. There's no skin color, religion, point of view, birth point, age. It has to do with E equals M. And it's fast, C squared. So you deserve all the energy that you want to take in. And if you keep choosing win-win, win for your environment, win for those around you, win for you, which takes learning compassion, which is one of the things to learn each day, each moment, for people learning along the way, you'll be there to help them, like Franz was. Then rub your hands and put it over your chest plate and just enjoy, take it in. Let your heart Relax a bit. Everybody's heart, as you know, the more you get super powerful, athletic, that the aerobic and the anaerobic part of your heart really like to coordinate. And so the speed of your heart beating does not need to be, you know, a million miles a second all the time. Just only when you need to exert it. And then back into a nice regenerating each moment. Because the way this body's set up, obviously, if you only get eight minutes on oxygen, you don't get much longer on you know, other parts of your body not getting bloodstream with oxygen in it. Then they die, necrose. So let all the vibrations and nourishment of this planet that is so much more than just the oxygen that you take in, so much more than just whatever you're gonna eat, that it's a learning experience that you can take it in right now through your chest. And feel this strength and use it all day, every day. And then just keep re-nourishing it, because that's why it's for you. It's not for you to forget it, it's for you to remember it. Just like that little girl, who, if she wakes you up in the morning, you, you don't want to forget her, you want to go, hi, how was your sleep? You want to have so much love in your heart, which is just energy, because everything is energy, so love is energy, is there where you have compassion. Little girl, how was it? And rub your hands and put it over your belly button and just take that into all the organs throughout the pelvis, the organs. Doesn't matter if you had surgery or not, the energetic spaces for where all those things were carefully placed, starting when you were just two little cells, still has a space there that loves to be nourished and will support you. It's part of the whole energy system. So let the energy flow throughout your pelvis, throughout your colon, throughout your small intestine, all the way throughout your upper abdomen where your liver, spleen, kidneys, pancreas, bile duct system, all the fun stuff. You've got so many sensors everywhere. It's not just for food. All of that is here. Let it, feel it, take it in, go ahead. You deserve it, it's yours. And then make a goal that today, or this evening, or tomorrow, or for the whole week, I am going to grow and learn and have an adventure in each of my grade eight and keep winning and finding myself growing in my prowess beyond my wildest imagination. 
I'll slowly come back in the room, go get some tea. Some energy tea would be great. And I'll see you on the other side.